With the same clothes, in the same scenery, but we actually now five days later when there was last episode. Yes, we are in. Uh, we're, we're now in Agios Kyrikos, which is on Ikaria, and um, beautiful place, very quiet. So quiet. But before we came to this quiet, peaceful place, we went through nightmare. That was Come back to Karistos. Do you remember the last time we finished in the Karistos? We spent in Karistos... Uh, I think uh, five days, four nights. Four nights. It was a lovely time. Oops. And yeah, we were hanging around really because there was a lot of uh, easterly winds and we wanted to go east, obviously. Um, so it was all headwinds. So we were just hanging around waiting on um, just a, a favourable slot to make the next hop which we considered to be Tinos uh, to make decent progression on our way. And we did, it was lovely sail. On our way we had some fantastic scenery, flat seas, so motoring all the way, which gave us a chance to catch up on some homeschooling and even catch up on some boat cleaning chores that had to be done. Tinos, um, very nice. We only stayed one night. Two that days. was Halloween night. Yes. Um, and we made our Halloween there. We made the pumpkins with Max, and not so many people celebrating uh, Halloween over there. But there was like there was a few kids painted up, and we did give out some presents, some you know trick or treats. Yes. About Halloween, you can hear on the Max's special in the episode five. And then we had uh, a, a group of people, just tr tr three charter boats came in beside us. And funnily enough, w one of the girls was from Dublin. So we had uh, a local a local to, to chat to. Um, it was nice. The next day then, morning they left and they gave us a little card, what is really nice. That's what I heard before, that in this type of sailing, what we're doing, the most amazing is how fast you're getting connection with other people and how nice those connections are and that's what we already in first month start to feel yeah straight the away people are so nice so nice so getting, genuine and you're getting something small like a handwrite card and has yes. meaning for has huge, you has, has huge meaning so nice and then we decided okay we see in another wind slot we would uh, head on from Tinos to Ikaria. Uh, the winds were supposed to be uh, northerly, um, slightly northwest, north northwest, and that would have been perfect for us to travel to Ikaria. It was going to be a long sail, we knew that. We knew it would be the, for us, new experience, for us, for me, because we have to cross agency, I don't know how to say agency. it. Agency. Agency. Yes. And so it wasn't like before. In the channel, you go in the channel, you have on the right and the left, you have always some mountains, some coast you can see. Now you go from point A to point B. Yes. Even For me, that's e even, you have nowhere to turn. Even going down to Tinos, you had uh, two islands on your side all the time. You're always sort of reasonably within sight of land. Uh, but heading from Tinos to Ikaria, we're going to be out into the sea. So I think, Monica, you thought that was a bit daunting. Hey Wendy, hey! Are you happy? Yes, I am. As happens here, um, our 15 knots of predicted wind turned into 40 knots of wind and instead of being on the beam, it was uh, 
forward, uh, forward of the beam. It was very unpleasant, very choppy. headway at all um, and that was our last chance to get out of this open sea and hide somewhere was to turn to the Mykonos yes to, to drop down to Mykonos so at least that put the wind back on a quarter we headed down and we thought okay we're going to Mykonos harbour so wind was getting stronger and stronger we pulled into the harbour and it just was gusting plus 45 knots in the harbour and with the windage on the catamaran, we, we had, lost our. We, we, had, we had no control of the catamaran in the harbour, and this guy was directing us into a narrower and narrower space. And I just could see that there's no way I was going to be able to control this. There's no way I could. I felt I could dock safely without banging off the wall, or worse, to bang off another boat. So I just thought, okay, let's abandon this. There are a few coves on the south side of the island that provide relief from the Meltemi, so that's what we decided we would do. We would just nip around the corner and drop the And hook. just before we get there, just we really weren't prepared for this uh, 14 knots wind, so we didn't even prepare our boat inside. So we started losing the things, the glass fall off. Oh, uh, the yeah, glass breaking, glass flower pots break, jumping yes. off, <laughs> uh, off uh, counters. Uh, Red lost, box, and yeah. we lost the pillows from outside. We lost, uh, we lost the cover from uh, cover from the engine. Cover from um, engine. It's only a sunscreen. It's only yeah. It's nothing, nothing important. But a few little things. Nothing was important. But yes. if you get all this in one moment, yes. it's just like oh my god, what's going on? Everything keeps falling. We're losing everything. All we have no control yeah. of both, and the waves are bigger than supposed to be. Wind is bigger than we're supposed to be. It's just uh, so what we do. So yeah, it, it, just another lesson learned to be a little bit more prepared for stuff like that and stow away the boat cushions. Um, normally they'd hold, but it's just the Velcro is starting to get weak on them. They're just so used. They're due to be replaced anyway. No, they have to be replaced because we're missing some. <laughs> I'm so happy, we lost them. <laughs> we can buy the new one. What just happened? What happened? <laughs> so yeah, we found a, a safe anchorage on the south part of Mykonos and we went quite close to the beach. We went into about six metres of water, uh, put out 40 metres of chain and just sat on the hook for the night. Oh no. That's what's happened. Ready? Did we go swimming? 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 Okay, we forgot to cover this bit, but when we had left Marie, uh, Mykonos port, 
one of our mooring lines got tossed um, between the webbing on the front on our little trampolines and um, passed back underneath the boat and got wrapped around the propeller. And so when we were coming into the bay to shelter from the Maltemi wind, one of the engines stalled and that's when we realised I gotta go swimming. We do our shift reporting. Anchor. Yeah, we, st we we stayed on anchor watch through the night, so four hours on, four hours off, and the wind got up to about thirty knots in the Mark's night. Max done fir first his watching. Yes, he Max. <laughs> first watching from six o'clock till nine. He yes. done his watching anchor, and he been got in it. So yeah, we had anchor alarm set and all that, and it was fine. The anchor held. We'd only were up to about thirty knots of wind in there, um, but it was flat water. You know. Yeah, but you still don't know the boat yet. You don't know how strong anchor will be. Well, you now we know it could keep easy, yes. but we didn't know, so yeah. you have to. You see, a little bit. Thirty-five kilo yeah. delta anchor. It's a pretty good anchor, and it just digs in, digs in hard. And it was the previous owner sort of was his pride and joy this anchor that I think he said he sat out in forty-five, fifty knots on it, and it was not a budge. Um, but what happened? We knew we cannot go to the land. And Doc wasn't trained yet to do his business on the boat. Business on the boat. Yeah. So the last walk he had at nine o'clock that morning, and he didn't go to the toilet till next day two o'clock. Next so day two o'clock. So he kept o'clock. his so, needs for yeah twenty six hours. No, twenty eight. Twenty eight hours. Twenty eight hours. Twenty eight okay. hours. Oh boy, we were trying all night. To telling him that he can do his wee on the boat on the mat, but he just yes, he just mommy, you cannot do that. You don't do yes. wee in your home. Yeah, yeah, he's so programmed to do this. So that's something we need to work on as well for longer passages. Um, but yeah, we we um, were safe through the night, and then we decided we would head off the next morning uh, again. We were watching for a wind slot, and that's the thing. We because we were anchored in this sort of bay, we were wondering, okay, we've thirty knots here, but what's what's it like outside? We sort of lost a bit of faith in, in in the forecast because it was so wrong the previous day, and we decided, okay, we have to make this travel, and we just get up and go early. The wind was forecast to be on the beam, but even the wind was like twenty four uh, predicted. We prepare ourselves better. We prepare we ourselves better. Everything yeah. inside. We put the life jackets this time on, and it's just to be yes. prepared. And we had up to thirty knots in the in the gusts. We we had thirty knots, but. A bit of a bumpy ride this morning. We're going from Mykonos to Ikaria. And we're heading east. Wind is from the north. We're 27 knots on the beam. Uh, it's ranging between 24 up to 30 knots in the gusts. We're motor sailing. And achieving 7.7 .7 average over the ground. Sometimes we're getting a little surge of over eight. But if we take knock off the engines, we're dropping back to five. And with the gusts, we just said, okay, it's not worth putting up a main and playing with reefs and stuff like that. So just to be comfortable and make quick passage, you have the engines on, but we're only taking over 900 RPM, giving a little bit of power through the water. Um, so that's it. It's gonna be bumpy for the next three hours anyway, and we close in on the foot of Icaria and then we go up along the coast to our destination which is another uh, Icaria is actually quite a long island so I think we've another three hours up along the coast after we get to the marina and um, we'll try to do another, another update if we get closer. It's a washing machine. Yeah. We are in the washing mati machine right now. So what's Max doing? But it's not cold. No it's not cold. I just had my jacket from 7 o'clock in the morning and we put the life jacket just in case because we didn't know what's gonna be. So now I cannot take off my jacket. Stay in the winter. But Max? Max doesn't actually care at all. He's watching TV. Fancy. I have to sit on the floor because 
Yeah. What speed do we have? 7.8. 7.8. So yeah, the waves were quite big and um, breaking onto the side of the boat, uh, a lot of spray coming on on, on the boat. Um, so yeah, the movement wasn't nice. I I thought I don't, I'm not seasick and I wasn't really, but when I go down, I started to feel a little bit uncomfortable, a little bit not nice. So I have to stay outside and I have to stay outside and on the floor because of dog. Dog didn't manage well the big waves he been surviving he been scared a little bit because that was the first time for him i'm sure in the future will be he better. will improve we even would like we used to have this in the car he used to get a bit of motion sickness now he doesn't anymore now on the boat when it's rocky a bit of motion sickness i was really big waves really and it was, big. There was a lot of movement i was trying to record this waves but uh, you can't really you don't see it on the videos i will show you now yeah you can just see you can see the height of the waves gone you know, with regards to the boat, how, how it's moving, but you cannot see the, the sort of the depth, the 3D effect. You just don't, you just never get this on camera. Max? Max, yeah, Max was fine. He, <laughs> He's just a born sailor. Born sailor. Somebody say Max. Yes, you just say you are a born sailor. You wasn't sick at all. I was not born sailor. I was, I was born being a YouTuber. Ah, you're born to be a YouTuber, but you're never on our video. You're too busy. So we finally made it to Acaria. Uh, lovely place to sort of catch up. Uh, Monica, I know, was very tired. Um, yeah, I got I got a good look on the shifts on the anchor watch. So it's I got, not good look. I got two, I got two sleeps. He Monica got two got sleeps <laughs> because next day he has to manage the boat. So that's kind of obvious. But for me, when I don't have good sleep, I'm kind of cranky. Yeah, you're and you're sitting. I, Monica's sitting on, on the floor here in the cockpit with the dog sitting on top of her. And then when Max came out after watching a movie, he wanted to snuggle in as well. So the three of them were huddled into the corner here. In the <laughs> like the homeless people with my hair being like this. And, just... yeah. and I've been tired, I wanted to sleep and I just couldn't because those bands. Yeah. But finally get here, there are oasis. And then even still, you can't rest because as soon as you come in, you're gonna wash the boat down, get some of the salt off the boat because the boat was just crusty with salt. You know what? I didn't know that. That salt is everywhere inside the boat, our wooden floor. I just say, who spilled some like an oil or something that yeah. was like a greasy, sticky stuff? And it's just the dampness in the air and the salt when that sit on the floor. It's on everything. You're walking it everywhere and it's going everywhere. So, yeah. So, just always uh, come in, clean up, catch up, yeah. sort the boat. And then finally, we went out and had a very late breakfast. <laughs> Two o'clock. <laughs> Two o'clock. Well, it's about second breakfast, really. And then, yeah, a nice relaxing afternoon. Well, we've bashed our way across the Asian Sea. We're approaching a carrier, and you can see some of it here behind me. It's a totally different day. We've gone from 30 knots of breeze starting out, and lumpy seas on the on the on the beam, all the, on the port beam, all the way across. And now we're flat water, no wind because we're in the Lady Island here. And um, yeah, the sun is out beaming and uh, shirts off, different day. Well, it's um, weather forecast today seems to be a little more accurate. It said we'd be sort of sailing into a hole, no wind area, and that's exactly what happened. We sailed out with the wind and arrived at this place and upon it to describe this after what we've been through, very much an oasis. And um, so yeah, we're tied up, boats washed down, we're sort of showered and now it's time to go and have a very very late breakfast and I think one or two beers. So that's it. Now 
we have all this uh, 3rd of November and we have uh, what is it, maybe 26, 27 degrees and it's uh, only 10 o'clock. Yeah, because this harbour is like a natural sun trap. It's just, it's just beautiful here. Absolutely beautiful. I could stay here. <laughs> but we have to move on. You have to move on. So you stay here as well. Mm -hmm. it's the best place ever because of the rocks. I can climb them. Yeah, it's a lot of rocks and I can climb on them. <laughs> We cannot we because to, right? we have to go tomorrow because next rain's gone. Yes, if we don't go, we get trapped here. And I believe there can be a bit of a surge into this harbor, it could be unpleasant. I don't think so. It looks like it's very well protected, but, yeah, but we have November, as yeah. I said a few minutes ago. We have November, that's the you will have less and the shorter windows to, to move. So take advantage while it's there. So, that's it. So thank you and see you on our next episode next week probably. See you on the other side. <laughs>